Hey students, today we are going to learn about adding integers. So to start with, we're going to do some examples where we add integers with the same sign using counters. So either the numbers are both positive or both negative. So here we have negative 2 plus negative 4. To model this using counters, on paper, I like to just use a plus sign for a positive integer and a negative sign for a negative integer. So negative 2 would look like this. And then I'm going to add to that four more negatives. 1, 2, 3, 4. So since I have a negative plus a negative, I can just add up. What are all of these negatives together? I have six negative symbols, so my integer is negative 6. I can do the same thing with positive integers. I have positive 3 plus positive 6. And in total, 3 plus 6 is positive 9. I can also model this addition on the number line. So I'm going to do the same two problems. Here's negative 2, and negative 2 is to the left of 0. It's right here, so do that on your notes as well. And then we're going to add negative 4. That means we're going further in the negative direction, further to the left of 0. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, and I'm going to end right here, which is negative 6. Here's po two positive integers. I'll start at positive 3, which is to the right of 0. When I'm adding another positive, I'm moving further to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I'm going to end up right here at positive 9. Okay, so what is the rule for adding integers with the same sign? Go ahead and take a minute, pause the video, write down your idea of what the rule is for adding integers with the same sign. All right, did you write something down? I'm going to show you my idea now. Adding integers with the same sign, we're just going to add the absolute values of the integer and then use the common sign. So here's an example, 2 plus 5 equals 7. We're going to add the absolute value of 2 plus the absolute value of 5. That's 2 plus 5, which is 7. And since both numbers are positive, it's positive. Here we have negative 2 plus negative 5. The absolute value of negative 2 is 2. The absolute value of negative 5 is 5. We add 2 plus 5 to get 7. But since both integers are negative, it's negative 7. So that's one way to write down the rule. Um, but you wrote down your own way as well. Now, in order to do our addition of integers with opposite signs, we need a few definitions. First, opposites. Opposites are two numbers that are the same distance from zero, but on opposite sides of zero. So three and negative three would be opposites. 15 and negative 15 would be opposites. They have the same magnitude or absolute value, but opposite sides of zero. Another term that's sometimes used to describe opposites is additive inverse. Let's talk about why that is. Our second vocabulary term is the additive inverse property. That states that the sum of a number and its additive inverse is zero. So the sum of five and negative five would be zero. If I take five steps forward and then five steps back, I'm exactly where I started. So the reason that opposites are also called the additive inverse is because if you add them, you get back to zero. So let's use that knowledge and add two integers with opposite signs using counters. So here we have 5 plus negative 10. So I'm going to start by modeling 5. So I'll add 5 plus signs, and then I'm going to add 10 negative signs. Now I'm going to kind of line them up, and I'll show you why. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I wanted to have these sort of next to each other because 
we know that based on the additive inverse property, if I add 1 and negative 1, I'm left with 0. Another term that we use to describe this is a zero pair. Each counter and its opposite is going to cancel out to zero. So each of these pairs of one positive and one negative are a zero pair. This positive plus this negative is zero, this positive plus this negative is zero, and so on. So when I have a pair of one positive and one negative, I can cancel them to zero and see what I'm left with. So in this case, I'm left with five negatives. So my sum is negative five. Let's do another one. Negative three plus seven. So I'll model negative three, three negatives. I'll put this line down the middle so we can kind of tell the difference between our problems here. Now I'm going to do seven positives, and at the first three, I'm going to be sure I'm kind of lining up here. One, two, three. I can keep going down this way, four, five, six, seven, or I can put them to the side either way. But now I'm going to cancel out my zero pairs. I have one, two, three zero pairs that cancel out, and what I'm left with is four positives. So the sum of negative three plus seven is positive 4. We can do this on the number line as well. So here we're going to start with positive 5. That's to the right of 0. And when I add a negative, I'm moving to the left in the negative direction here. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and keep going. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 more. And I end up here at negative 5. Let's do our other problem. Negative 3 is to the left of 0. I'm adding a positive, so I'm moving to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I'm going to end up at positive 4. So what's the rule for adding integers with opposite signs? This is a little bit harder. Take a minute to pause. Write down your idea. Now let me go ahead and show you, in my words, I would say you would subtract the lesser or the smaller absolute value from the greater absolute value, and then use the sign of the integer with the greater absolute value. So here if I'm adding 8 plus negative 10, I'm going to take their absolute values, 8 and 10, subtract the smaller one, so 10 minus 8 is 2, and the larger absolute value was 10. So that means my answer, I'm sorry, my larger absolute value um, is 10, but the integer is negative 10, which means my sum is negative, negative 2. Okay, so the sum of an integer and its additive inverse or the opposite is 0. We already talked about that. Um, and now we've got our rule for adding integers with opposite signs. So, Let's look at an example where we're adding more than two integers. Here we have this bank account, and we want to find um, the change in the account balance after all of these transactions. So a transaction can be putting money in, which is a deposit, or taking money out, which is a withdrawal. So first we've withdrawn $40, so that's negative 40. We've taken $40 out. Then we added 50. Then we've added another $75. Then we've withdrawn 50, so we're going to add negative 50. Now let's think about what order we want to do this. We know that addition is commutative. We can add the numbers in any order we like. I kind of would like to add these two together first because I know they're going to cancel out to zero. So I'm going to say negative 40 plus 75, plus 50, plus negative 50. And let's deal with that first. 50 plus negative 50 is 0 because those two numbers are additive inverses. So now I'm left with negative 40 plus 75. The absolute value of 75 is 75. 
The absolute value of negative 40 is 40. 75 minus 40 is 35. And now I need to think which absolute value is greater. This one is 75, which is positive. So my answer is going to be positive. So the change after all of this stuff happened, the change, the net change is that we added $35 to our bank account. Okay, go ahead and try a few on your own and I will see you soon.